Okay, so thanks for attending. And this is a talk about the uh, indirect external access. So we have a long standing issues, uh, basically on certain architectures. Uh, first issue is uh, copper relocation. So copper relocation was uh, invented like 30 years ago for the processors at the time. So the idea is uh, we can use the copy in the executable to improve access for the uh, data defined in the share library. So the copy is created at the runtime in the executable is used by the executable and the share libraries. And uh, of course, because the, the copy is in the executable, executable can access copy directly. There's a problem with the copy location. There is an overhead, you need, need to maintain a copy in the uh, executable. That will take time to copy and of course in the space. Yeah, another problem is if you have a read only in the share library, it becomes read write in the executable. And another problem is uh, because all share libraries must reference the data, the copy of the data in the executable, even if the data is marked as the protected in the share library, it must go through DOT to access the copy in the uh, executable. And another problem is function pointers. On the system without function pointers, the uh, function descriptors, the function pointer that can have different meanings depends on the uh, where and how the function are defined. And if the function is in the executable, the address can be the function body. If the function is not defined as executable, but in the share library, even if the uh, function is protected, it can be that the function point can be the address of the PLT entry in the share library or in the executable. Of course, that's a problem. They are, you cannot use function body, the address of function body as a function pointer. And for the protected functions, the dynamic linker had to search all the share libraries for the function pointer. And here is the proposal. And first, we remove copy location. So access in the executable to the undefined function, they must, sorry, in undefined symbol, they must use uh, GOT. And uh, on certain systems, Linker can optimize out the GOT access. And if you have a LTO, and the, the compiler knows where the symbol is defined. And now, without copy relocation, the read-only data in the shared library can remain read-only at the runtime. And also, the access to the protected symbols in the shared library, uh, in the shared library, can access the uh, local data body directly. And that means a couple things. So, if the processor has IP relative access, you can use that. Can use can be used. And if a processor does not have IP relative access, so it must go to the GOT.
for the function pointer, we can introduce this proposal introduce a concept of canonical function pointer. It's kind of similar to the function descriptor, but for the system without function descriptor. So similar to the data symbol, all undefined function pointers access must use GOT. And also because of it, the function pointer of protect symbol is the address of function body. And there's a special uh, exception if you have branches to undefined functions it can use the PLT. To, we need to make sure the access to the uh, external symbols, they must, has to be consistent. So we introduced two uh, features in the uh, GNU property node. And when yes, we introduce the uh, marker called the needed marker. And also for the indeed marker, we have introduced bit saying this object follow the indirect external access. And basically it means a protected symbol in the shared library can be treated as local. And copy relocation should be avoided both at the link time and the run time. And also the uh, function pointer at reference must use DOT both at the run time and the link time. And here is what compiler support for the indirect external access. And the, uh, the, for the GCC, this proposal used the similar, the same command line option at LVM. And it tells the uh, compiler always use GOT to access undefined symbols. And also generate, generate the external access marker in the uh, compiler output. And in the executable and the shared library for the protected symbol, we can use the uh, address of the protected symbol directly. And this potentially can break the API because uh, if you have a mixed object file, shared library and executable at the runtime, they may have different concept of the either the data address or the function pointers. And uh, the, uh, the option, the default is disable this feature. And the linker support. The linker support will check all the input and uh, generate the proper marker in the output. And linker can use the uh, DOT and PLTX relocation to uh, to decide if the indirect indirect external access is followed or not, and also avoid copy relocation and optimize the access to the protect symbol. For the linker support, for the linker support, it has been checked into the BUTO 2.37. And for the dynamic linker support, it checks all the component for the marker and disallow copy relocation for the protect symbol defined in the shared library with the marker. And for the function point, 
for the function pointers, it disallow the non-GOT function pointer in the executable to the protect symbol in the shared library because the access to the protect symbol in the shared library is local. And the function body of protect symbol functions will be used as a function address. And that's the end of my slide. So the current status, yes, the uh, that mentioned earlier, the build here 237 supporting marker and the as well as the optimization and the patches for GCC and GDPC has been submitted. So that is what I have. Any questions, comments? Yeah, Carlos, please go ahead. Um, so HJ, um, you and I have been discussing this upstream. My my one question, which question I raise every once in a while, is on observability of the linkage that we've just created with the function calls through the GOT. So whether or not we consider a like the PLT part of this part of an ABI here, um, you know, we've we've been doing FNO PLT. We've started doing direct function calls through the GOT. Um, my, I guess my my question remains: Do we need to preserve the PLT in any way? Do we need to preserve the the capacity to use that PLT if a user requests it for compatibility purposes? Do we need to preserve the ability to rewrite the got entries to point to like the resolver the way that we currently are doing things with auditing? So I'm just I'm simply looking around that area of developer and developer tooling, debugging, and observability around being able to redirect some of those function calls. Um, I've seen very clever things done with, with PLTs where, for example, you can introduce uh, arbitrary or random functional delays in like libp thread calls in order to see if there are race conditions in them, right? You can, if you can arbitrarily delay function calls, you can arbitrarily see if there were uh, open or closed race windows. So I guess my question to you is, um, have you considered the impact of observability on on the way we're implementing and the way we're making these feature changes? I believe the PLT uh, is access is independent, orthogonal to this proposal. There's no uh, direct conflict there. My specific to PLT in this proposal only to require to for the function pointer. So the function pointer, it requires to use the uh, GOG to access point. We already do that today for Pi. So this makes it mandatory even for NumPy. So that's the only change for this. So the reason to use GOT to access the function pointer is so that we can use the protected function body as a function address in the shared library. So as far as the PLT is concerned, I do not see there is a change unless the pi is totally different in terms of the PLT today. I believe it's not the case. Okay, thanks. I, I think there's something that we'll con I'll continue thinking about in terms of our, is there impact on observability. I have to think a little bit more because you did list there was like one exception, which is like on x86, does the main executable continue using the address of the PLT as the as the address, you listed an exception in one of your slide pages. You said, Anna, here's an exception, and you, you skimmed over it, and you just jumped to the. Yeah, so still, it it has to, so it depends on how the PLT is used. So for the function call, 
so as I mentioned earlier, he uh, is, I believe, is I mentioned uh, where it is. Uh, marker. So branch to undefined functions can still use PLT. So I guess it's the only reason you use PLT. If function is local, we do not use PLT for local function at all. Yeah. Yeah, this would be something to be well, resolved by an external shared don't library. We a, don't we use a, a call to the PLT for an iPhone? And does this have any impact on, on like a protected iPhone? Mm, protect, so the iPhone always use PLT. I don't mm -hmm. believe there's a change here. Okay. And also, it, uh, the iPhone of a protect symbol should work fine. Okay. I know that I struggle with trying to understand the implications of, of, of everything you're proposing here, H.J. Are we able to get the slides so that I can go back and review them? <laughs> because I, I have trouble doing that in real time. <laughs> and I, as I said, I implement in the, uh, already implemented the linker, and now it's missing part is the compiler. The compiler chain will address a couple of long-standing issues in the GCC, especially for the protect symbol, uh, both for the uh, data and the function symbols. Uh, I do not believe there is an issue. An issue. The, the, the main issue is that potentially there's an ABI compatibility issue because we used to have a copy, real copy in the executable. We used to use the PLT address in the executable for the function address. If it's for the data, if two copies are used, then we have a problem. So that's the linker that the GDBC chain to make sure it does not happen. Uh, for the function address, now if we have two copies, two different value as a function address, then if you compare of them, if you compare two function points, they can be different, even though they point to the same function. So that's the API issue I mentioned. That is what the uh, dynamic linker change here. It's about. Right. And so, so, it, so that's the linker chain, the dynamic linker chain. So it's here. So are you suggesting we relax that requirement that it, two function pointers, if they call the same function, have to compare equal? Are you suggesting we're going to relax that requirement? No. We, Good. my, <laughs> my dynamic linker enforce that. Okay, yeah. so, so in, you're going to force it into the dynamic linker. Okay. Yeah, and in some cases today, they didn't compare equal if you were clever and did some things between the executable and the shared object. If you, if you, you could trick the compiler, and I remember this because it, some, in some cases with protected, you end up with a local symbol address versus in the executable, the address of the PLT entry. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. there, were, there were some issues. So I think this goes in the right direction that we are definitely saying more like this needs to be all the same, uh, the same address. So, right. and I don't, yeah, I don't think that copy relocations bias the performance that we needed anymore today, and the complications. Well, and, I think that, and they're kind of backwards in the sense that you know, if you've got a well-written DSO, it shouldn't have to go through uh, to, to get its data from the main executable where it copied it. It should be getting it. From where it, it, it's local, it's local address. We ought to be able to do that kind of stuff. And the, and the way we structure copy relocations is none of that works right now. Yeah, and, and the change we, we changed how we develop code. I mean, and that's just I think it's acknowledging how development has changed over the last twenty years. Yeah, and the changing sizes, potentially the copy relocations, the mismatch sizes have led to security issues and discussions with, um, you know, various product security teams to say. Well, what does it mean if the size changes? What does it mean for that 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 type? What does it mean for for that access? So, it's not it's not a great it's not a great design in that regard. Yes. No. Well, it was meant to solve how we were trying to write code in the past. 
and, and I think the world's changed. So yes. we have another comment from Florian as well. So in GDFC, we have a bunch of variables where we would like to avoid cover relocations for performance reasons, because we want to make sure that uh, these variables aren't on a heavily written cache line. And is there something I can put in a header file so that GCC won't generate a direct external reference to that variable? Mm. Yes, so what we can do is we can introduce the attribute. So we can apply the uh, indirect external access to instead of doing only do that in command line, we can do that on per symbol basis. Yes, we can do that. And then it will generate a code entry and if the linker uh, also doesn't optimize it, uh, doesn't opt and the linker won't uh, introduce a copy relocation. It... No. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah. Be... yeah the, uh, uh, of course, for the marker, it applies to the whole uh, shared object. So we do not per symbol marker. So the, uh, the currently, uh, let me see what's the linker the linker support it is say avoid cobble relocation if possible and uh, because some sometimes uh, if you do not have a proper relocation with the access it cobble looking has to be used so the linker in that case uh, will issue a, a, a error Yeah, so it every so everything talk here can be implemented, and ex, the only exception is the uh, as far as the linker is concerned, the indirect ex, indirect external access has to be per shared object, not per symbol. Okay, uh, but yes. Uh, I thought the Carlos command. Yes, we can. In, we can certainly. We can add the attribute. But that that is actually independent of the rest of the changes, right? Uh, it so it will be built on top of this, both in the linker. Oh, uh, not in the linker because that's separate thing. Both in the uh, 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 yeah, it is linker. Both in the compiler. Basically, here is say the comp compiler support. So what Carlos asking is so in addition to the command line option, we add the uh, matching the uh, attribute so that the compiler can decide. Can uh, can tend now to use the uh, direct access to the undefined symbol, even in the uh, executable pi or numpy. Yeah, my point is we can if the compiler has the support, we can start using it today, without the rest of the changes in place, because it just generates yes. applications that exist yes. today. Yes, correct. So there but, are no new riddle. There's go ahead. No, but I was gonna say, but to do that though, we need the uh, we need the needed support, and we need and then doesn't libcs six get marked with needed indirect external access, and the whole of the DSO gets handled with the new semantics. Then we mm -hmm. have to be prepared to do that. No, we can't do that. No, it's no, we do not need to, Yeah, we do not. We cannot do that. We can only uh, we. It's the best uh, effort. I see. I see where you're going. I guess see where you're going with this. Then, so it, it's you, you're simply going to avoid generating the copy relock and leave all the semantics the same. Yes, that's okay. what uh, Florian is well, proposing. The, yeah, then we need some other attribute access mode because I'd expect indirect external access to bring in all the semantics that we're defining here. Uh, yeah, but there are no simple semantics, so. 
<laughs> it's a per object uh, property. Yeah, it is. So basically, what uh, Florin suggesting is so we mark a, on a per symbol basis, we mark a symbol has no direct external access. And it, again, it's, it is the best effort approach that because even though we mark that, the, uh, the old compiler does not support that option. So it is best effort the, for the old compiler that may still use the uh, direct access. It may, it will introduce copy relocation. And uh, then because of GDBC is not marked with the indirect external access marker. So GDBC at the runtime will happily introduce the copy relocation to handle that. But if you have a say GCC 12, if you are up to your file compiled with GCC 12, you will not use the uh, direct external access. So that's a, it, as I said, it's a best effort approach. Um, so actually I have, uh, I have an, another question. Um, so ab about the code generation, I mean, historically the reason for like the F pick option was, uh, executables were originally built for, for, for static linking. And then when dynamic linking came in, it was kept for compatibility. But I mean, these days executables are built for Pi usually anyway. And now with this new mode, there are more changes. So my question is. Is there then any any real change in code generation for an executable versus code generation for a shade library, or couldn't it just all be the same and we don't even have to treat the executable as special anymore at all? Uh, this is a good question, and the answer is mostly is yes. There's no uh, distinguishing differences between the. Uh, executable and the share library as far as the external symbol is concerned, external symbol. And however, there are uh, uh, things, uh, for example, the uh, because of the share, the function, global functions in the share library can be preempted. So if you have definition in the function, if it's not marked as protected, in the share library, you have to use, say, for example, function pointers, you have to use the GOT. And for the data access, you have to use the GOT. But for the data definition in the X, in the executable, it can be accessed directly. It's not because of copy relocation, it's because it is the real definition. It will override everything else in the share library. Share library. So in that sense, they are different. But for the external, for the undefined symbols, yes, share library and ex and uh, uh, executable, they can be treated the same. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Um, was there any other comment or question? So Jeff asked if we can introduce a new relocation to get the behavior. I'm not sure if, if we need a new relocation. Well, I'm thinking of the case uh, where could... Florian wants to, to have the, the extra ah. access, but not. Okay, so basically what you are asking for is the runtime relocation, right? You want a new runtime relocation. So basically, uh, when you access to that symbol, do not uh, do not use the copy location. So yes, I think I, some, some I think that's what he's asking. No, yeah, but I, I, I so uh, I think we don't need a new relocation as long as the static linker never turns indirect external access into a copy relocation as some uh, form of relaxation uh, no i do not believe stack linker yeah okay i have to double check i, I trying to what i'm trying to say i do not believe the cop linker does that today 
if it does static does that today, we can easily change it. But I do not believe we do that today. I don't we believe it. take this offline. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, for short time. That we have a coffee break now, do we? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I still need to take a, to get offline for a minute. <laughs> yeah, we can I, have a 15 minute coffee break. We can, we can keep talking or not. Yeah, either way is fine. Yeah. No, I think uh, for, uh, so QT uses something like this today. So they require that uh, the main program needs to be built as PIC. Yep. Um, yeah, a Q, yeah, QT really, really likes it. Yeah. QT has been the poster child for this. <laughs> yes. So they have been asking for this feature for last 10 years? I don't know. Very long time. Well, and, and I think we, we, we've been back and forth with them several times on, on what it's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to work. But I know that when we were doing the LTO bring up, um, these problems raise their head again. And if we could if we could do something that actually works for QT, I think we are probably on the right track. It does <laughs> work. They they uh, they have a, so I as I said I have a compiler patch. So I give the compiler patch to QT developers. They really they they applied my compiler patch and they rebuild QT. They really like it. It oh work. good. Good. I have largely ignored this uh, you know, in, in the upstream discussions, but but having listened to the, to the talk here, I think I need to pay more attention. Because some of the stuff you're talking about is stuff we're going to want to we're going to want to do, um, you know, with my new company. So I guess I got to pay more attention to as much as I was hoping to avoid it. It, yeah, so the the other piece is the protect symbol. We with this ex, indirect external access, we can properly implement not so right. And that and that's particularly what I'm interested in is, is proper semantics and optimization of protected symbols in DSOs. Yes. So the protect symbol can be also be used in the GDFC. So we know nobody so we can basically it's similar to Florian's asking. And basically, we do not want copy location. We do not want, uh, you know, uh, to access the copy. Well, no, so, we don't want to access the copy. We want to avoid the got when we can too. If it's a local symbol, yeah, we have ways to get to that very efficiently, and and you know, we'd like to use them. Yes, yes, <laughs> totally agree. And the only exception is 32 bit on uh, this is uh, x86, 32 bit x86. So we do not have a. Uh, not, that's a don't care these days. I, I probably shouldn't yeah. say it that right. bluntly, but. <laughs> right. So, so that is why I. So enable indirect external access in, in NumPy on 32 bit x86 the code will be bigger, will be slower. But who cares? No. Well, we don't care. Somebody somewhere will care, but I personally don't anymore. <laughs> yeah, same here, same here. So again, it's the compiler switch. We, they are the, 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 the my, my patch. The new behavior is uh, not the default. The old behavior is the default. So maybe in the future, a couple of years from now, then the indirect external access can be the default. I think that's where the RVM is going. And I think it's a good idea. And again, for the compiler implementation, most of the things, because the decision was mostly made, we have a com target hook for that. So all my compiler changes, most of them are in the back end. And of course, we can move that into, into the, uh, in, into the uh, processor independent part. But again, most of my uh, compiler changes are, I would say 90% of my compiler changes are in the backhand. The only thing is in the uh, 
uh, in the it's in the middle end is the marker. So yes, I think I think we already have that today for the uh, interposable. That's called the visibility. We have a global. We have a also yeah. So we have default. We have the protected. So protected is not interposable, and the default is. Yeah, I think we there, there are multiple conversations going on. There's the, the, the there's a conversation around uh, the, a general direction where we're seeing more and more projects move away from interposable symbols. Um, Python oh, is, is the poster child, but I, I see that as a trend. Um, but, and and Sidney so made, made a comment that if you know, they're trying to push people to use interposition to, to hook Malik. Um, so if we move away from, from interposable by default, we need to make sure we have a way to satisfy those kinds of needs. And I think if we do, I think I think those capabilities will be there. Um, it's just a <laughs> he just wants to make sure we don't kill that one that 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 case where they need it. I think all the pieces in the ELF spec is there already today. The question is, so for example, what we can say is, uh, from now on, all the symbols are protected by default. Then protect symbol is not interposable, but we can always say for this symbol, it has to be default. So I exactly. Think I have everything we are we need for to support interposable is there today. It's just right now we do not have a good way to support the protect symbols. With this proposal, we have a way forward to really support protect symbols. Then we can talk about what's the default interposable. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I don't want to conflate these two issues. They, they happen to come up in this in this talk, but I think they are largely separate. Um, yes. So that so this is my so I opened the GVPCC box, a couple of them about this particular issues in the past, maybe last five ten years, and I try I have I want to fix it for a long time. And I think to finally we have some motivation. I have some motivation to really uh, do it. Okay. So I think um, I do would like to give people at least a little bit of a break. So if we can wrap up the discussion, then we have like five minutes break left. <laughs> so sounds good. Thanks so much, HJ. Sure. So, so I will take a break.